and welcome to Time to Talk With. And this time it's Nick Ridley. I'm absolutely delighted to have Nick Ridley come along as my first guest on a podcast. Um, I've known Nick for many years. I think it was 2008 or 2009 when I first met him. And he did um, the photos and the videos for the pet, all the pet gun dog books. Um, he's great to work with, good fun, always learn a lot, really patient. And whenever we talk, the conversations always run far and wide, uh, as they have in this podcast from the RSPCA and uh, through the photography and drones and dog training. So I hope um, you enjoy this podcast. Uh, with Nick Ridley, UK's top dog photographer, author, the gun dog editor for Sporting Gun, as well as uh, now a gun dog trainer. Uh, and enjoy, enjoy. Take care, stay safe. Bye bye. Hi, Nick. It's really good to have you on my podcast. It's um really exciting I've not done this before you're my first person that I'm going to interview typical I'm a guinea pig again for you you're you're my guinea pig as always it's amazing but first of all before we go anyway um I've got to say I love your haircut you put that on Facebook the other day I did yeah for for, well since I was 17 I'd had a flat top haircut Uh um I've only had three barbers in my whole life and uh obviously due to the the, the uh, situation we find ourselves in. Uh, it was uh, Mrs. R and the Dog Clippers on Sunday night. Awesome. Uh, she, she's not done a bad job. Did you use Did you use the dog clippers? Yeah. Oh, amazing. Number num, number 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 two on the sides and number four on the top. So, well, Spud gets. I'm not part. actually this colour. It's the remains of the dog hair that was left in <laughs> the last. <coat. laughs> Which dogs do you use the clippers on? Well, we just we got we got four cocker spaniels, and um, so we we really only use them on their on their feet. Okay. Um, just to tie them, I can't stand yeti feet on spaniels. Um, ours all live indoors, so of course if they get with the with the winter we had it was so wet they go out and they come they come in absolutely caked. So I like to try and keep their their feet fairly fairly trimmed. I bet. Um, and they get they get all like balls in between their toes and stuff, don't they? And all yeah, massive yeah. and horrible. I, and I don't suffer from that problem, but um, we we can deal with trimming up my hairy feet if I need to. So. <laughs> 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 oh God! I don't know whether I'm going to be allowed to go back to the barbers when this is all over now, because this is after she did such a good job. I think I'm uh, I'm destined to have a home haircut forever. We've called it the coronavirus cut. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to trademark that. I'm going to trademark it. Yep, the coronavirus cut. She hasn't, she hasn't put a little CV in the back of your head, has she? You can't see what's on the back of my head, and I'm not going to turn around to show you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good to talk to you on the podcast. I'm I really think I think, I think she put something this, this way up, but I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, she could have put slap here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that, that would never work because I'm not seeing anybody to do it at the moment. So, um, true. <laughs> that's, that's fine. There we go. Got plenty of need, time for that. Need, needs must, as they say. <laughs> must. It, yeah, you're going to see everybody with like really disjointed fringes as a, you yeah. know, look at must as a sound. My worrying thing is that the only other thing that Deb ever cuts is Bertie or a horse. So I was half expecting a blanket cut or a, a hunter <laughs> cut or a saddle cut. Or something. I managed to get away with that. That's too much information. <laughs> the, wor- the worst thing was she actually wanted to do my eyebrows because I normally have my eyebrows done at the barbers as well. And she started on them with a little epilator. No, that was too painful. So. Do you normally get your eyebrows done? Yeah. Okay. And the other thing, men always get their ears done. Why is it? Your hair stops growing on your head, but it starts growing out of your ears and your nose. It's just a man thing. It, and your, your nose keeps growing and your ears keep growing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's because your brain shrinks and your head gets smaller as you get older. God knows what this got to do with dog photography, but it's an <laughs> interesting subject to talk about anyway. I know. I mean, I don't talk to you about photography, so um, for people who don't know, which will be... <laughs> The minority, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, you know, you're the, you're the most amazing dog photographer, and you did the photos yeah. for the Pet Gun Dog books, which is how I met you. I went down to Howard's, Howard Kirby's place in Truxton, I used to live down there, and 
2009, I think it was the beginning of 2009, oh, and he'd yeah. done some, you'd, you'd done these amazing flyers for him of Mullins Court. And um, so I said to Howard, who did your photo? It was absolutely stunning. And he gave me your details. And then I phoned you. I don't know if you can remember this one call or not. I can really remember it. I phoned you up and I said, I'm thinking about writing a book. And you spent an hour and a half on the phone to me talking about writing books. Did I charge you? No, you didn't. That was the biggest mistake I made then, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you didn't. You didn't. It was a freebie. Yeah. And I thought, you know, it was, it was so nice. And not many people do things like that. You know, not many people will talk to you and take the time out to go through their experience. And you did. And so when I wrote the pack Gundog, um, when I finished writing it, we then got together in 2009. So it must have been 2008 I spoke to you. Yeah. We then got together in 2009 and did the photos for the first book, the pack it's Gundog. It's, a, it's an interesting little thing you say there about people not wanting to perhaps share ideas and things. But, you know, I've been lucky as well because, you know, that conversation I had with you has led on to 10, 12, however many years, um, relationship through work mm -hmm. um, and I've learned a huge amount so you know sometimes if you if you can take the time out to talk to these people no matter who it is you can learn as much from them as they perhaps can pick up from you so it's not and I don't even think it's a one-way conversation um, and, and I always viewed especially from the photography side of things a few years ago I started doing one-to-one um, -one dog photography courses for people mm -hmm. and I can remember Deb saying to my wife and uh, she said to me she said you know why are you showing everybody what you do mm. well you know, we're all different uh, my style is different what I'm physically capable of is doing uh, is, will be different to somebody else um, my business attitude about so we're all different in all different ways um, and again I've learned people I've learned things off of people that that I've taught um, lessons to and Oh, I'm trying to think of the saying, is it not to, to be a, there's something along the lines of, of a teacher should be able to learn as well as teach. There was, there was some philosophical saying somewhere, I can't think what it was, but yeah, you can, you should be always willing to learn as well as try and help people out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I learn, you know, I'm, I'm, I teach, I've got students, student instructors and um, I learn so much from them. You, you know, every month when I sit down and mark my homework, I always get something out of it. And it's, it's fantastic. Mm. It's great. But going back to 2009, when you turned up with um, little Harry. Yeah. Little Harry. Yeah, he's, 12, he's 12 now. Yeah. Good grief. So he, he was 12, he, 12 he, last month. Yeah. He was just yeah. over a year when, when he was. Came and Bart was, um, craggy six or something. Yeah. And, I, it was just amazing because it's the first time I'd done anything like that and your skill was just amazing. I can remember doing the photo which ended up being the front cover of the book, you lying on the floor, on the ground, with the pheasant in front of you, the docking in front of you, and having Bart run at you, like, flat out. Mm. And I thought, you're a nutter, lying there. Well, you you actually were a good judge of character back then. And so, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it's like in everything, I always, and not so much nowadays, but in the early days, I always used to push myself. And probably the, the one picture, um, kind of going off on a slight tangent, but uh, I actually went up to uh, David Lissett, the gundog trainer for the Duke of the Clue. And I did some pictures up there. And uh, it's probably, I, it's probably one of my favourite pictures because I know how I did it. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it had a springer that um, I photographed in midair over, jumping over a lake and that picture I, I was actually up to chest high in water I actually went out to the, the lake in waders mm -hmm. and we thought oh, I don't know what it would be being then probably two and a half thousand pounds worth of camera gear uh -huh. and got that picture as the dog went off the end now as a picture technically people may have said oh it's slightly out of focus it's not this it's not that but to take that picture I just wanted to push it that little bit further yeah. and that's what I've always tried to do. Um, it's like, again, you know, I'm, I'm a lot older now and physically things get a little bit more difficult. But I think that's what you have to do. You've got to try and just push that a little bit. It gets boring otherwise. I mean, taking a picture of a dog standing by a tree is one thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, you've just got to try and push that, that, that little bit further if you can. And that, and that relates back to your picture there that's on the front cover of the book. 
it was just pushing something and trying to make something a bit different. And I don't know if you can see over the shoulder here, the sporting yeah. staff front cover was Ziggy, yeah. and little Zig. And I can remember doing that so clearly. I mean, it took, it took a long time to do because we balanced off. Um, <laughs> it was an artificial we log. balanced a log, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, between two chairs. <laughs> yeah, and you were lying <laughs> underneath the chair at one point, letting Ziggy jump over the top of you. And it was, it was hysterical. But an amazing you... photo. I mean, wow. What we ended up with was stunning. So how did you get into photography? What inspired you to move away from what you were doing to, you know, completely different career and, uh, which, I mean, it was a long time ago. When did you start in photography? Well, it was always a hobby. Um, way, way, way back, um, you know, in, in my late teens, early, early 20s. So, so it, was always, it was always a hobby. Um, photographing the children and... Um, I did a photograph of Deb. We used to go to a lot of horse shows, so I'd photograph. Um, and at the time, funnily enough, um, I was credit control manager for a it was the first free newspaper in in the country called the Local Advertiser. Ah. What, so what I used to do there is go out on a weekend and photograph like a Gymkhana or something like that, um, and got pictures published. But that was just fun, really. Um, and then <clears throat> in later later years. Uh, I ended up joining the RSPCA as an inspector. Um, I got made redundant from a job I was in. Wanted a total change of career. Um, I was always interested in the law, funnily enough, and still am. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I joined the society. Um, thoroughly enjoyed my my 12 years I was with them. But from the photography point of view, we used to have to take our own uh, case pictures of cruelty cases. Okay. And because of my interest in it, I ended up doing a lot of uh, pictures for, for the rest of the group and all over the country. And I specialised in wildlife law as well. So that kind of got me into it in a, <laughs> in a in another kind of angle, really. And uh, as, you know, as the years went on, um, I started to uh, enjoy it more and more. And I hankered to get a picture published. That was my, I'd had the newspaper pictures, but that was kind of by default, really. Um, but I really wanted something published. And I always remember there's a magazine called EOS magazine, which is a magazine for Canon users, Canon users, which I use. Um, and uh, I'd spoken to them and they were doing a series on people that use Canon cameras in their work. Uh -huh. So I approached them with an idea, I checked with, the governors at work and they were fine about it and uh, I actually told a story of, of a horse that I had a case it was a cruelty case that I dealt with and one of the main pieces of evidence we used to use are before and after photographs so start is in this case it was a starved horse we right. kept it for x amount of times fed it properly looked after it and it looked better again so there's the before there's after what have you done to it the only thing you've done is feed it properly uh -huh. that's that's basically the case but also I wrote the piece for the magazine right and again i'd always like writing but I'd, I'd written a few poems and bits and pieces and uh also um that kind of got me thinking a little bit and as you well know my my mind never sits still um there's always i'm always trying to think of new things um and i decided to write a book on photography on pet photography mm -hmm. and checked again with work and uh, I actually approached a publisher um, about writing a book called How to Pho Photograph Pets, mm -hmm. which to cut a long story short, uh, I did. Um, it was the only one on the market at that time. It's never been the best seller in the world. Um, but for me, it was a, it, oh, I can't tell you the, the buzz I got out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've actually put the, <laughs> the manuscripts and all the proofs in a box so my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren can actually see that that gives me such a buzz to think that somebody's gonna in the future number member of family are gonna see that that like and also got copies of the book have, have you i've got a copy of the book that's on the cupboard have you got um so have you got your original manuscripts and your notes on it yes yeah the original manuscripts and also um i've got all the original 
CDs as they were then with the original pictures on. Uh-huh. And this is how things have changed in photography. At the time, the publishers had never published a book using digital images. They'd, oh, only, wow. they'd only ever u- published a book using scanned uh, transparencies. And okay. one of the things I had to go through quite a lot was sending them in um, uh, samples. Uh-huh. And I was using I was using Canon's first, I think it was a D30 or a 30D, I think it was a D30, which was Canon's first digital camera they ever bought out. Mm-hmm. Uh, 3.2 megapixels or something like that now. The one I use now is 35 megapixels, so okay. just goes to show. So that happened. Um, and that got me ticking away again. And uh, I then got asked to, and I always remember this, I got asked by an agility club, Aylesbury Agility Club, mm-hmm. would I like to go and photograph one of their shows? And at the time, I had an old uh, old army tent, mm-hmm. an old Land Rover at the time, still got another one now. But we went to this show, and I set up some jumps. I had a computer, which we ran an extension cable out of the, um, out of the club house. It was on a, on a rugby pitch. Uh-huh. And we set up these jumps, and I was taking these pictures and going and downloading them and showing the people. And they were absolutely blown away. And this was, this would have been 22 years ago, I reckon. Good so 20 years ago, thereabouts. Yeah. And I'll always remember, I, took, I couldn't print out or anything because the, the technology wasn't there. I took orders of over a thousand pound that day. One day, that was a month and a half salary for me. Mm, I bet. So that led on to one thing to another. And we ended up having a, a, a dog event business for many, many years. We had a big trailer, travelled all around the country, went up to Aviemore doing husky racing, um, gun dog tests, agility, flyball, obedience, pet dog shows. Um, and we got to the stage where we were able to take the pictures show the client on a big screen at the back of the trailer and print out up to 19 by 13 on site. I remember the trailer. It was amazing. It was, yep. it was, it was awesome. I remember seeing it at Scurries and at the game fairs. So yep. It was fantastic. We, we, we did uh, all the big game fairs and it was great fun. Uh, it, it was a, a lifestyle, if you like. You know, we had a good, a good core of people that, that followed us and liked the pictures, liked what we did. We tried to make it fun. Uh, Deb used to work in the trailer um, and about five years ago the trailer was getting very tired it had I mean I don't know how many probably thousands of miles it had done mm-hmm. and um, we were getting older and it was just getting more and more difficult the flip side was as well that more and more people were getting camera stuff like we'd go to an agility show we'd pay to be there as the official photographers and you'd get Fred with his nice camera sat the side of the ring taking pictures of his other club members and uh, that was becoming that was happening more and more and more and I always remember the last show we did was down at Newbury and uh, all weekend we never took a penny never took sold one picture That's amazing. And, uh, and I said to Deb I said that's it we've had we've had the absolute best best out of this mm-hmm. So that was the end of the, the, the event business. So that kind of encompasses really the, the evolution of wow. Wow. photography. But I mean, because I mean, iPhones now, I mean, the, the quality you can get now, everyone just whips the iPhone out all the time, don't they? But you can't, for me, I don't think you can beat a really good professional photo. And sorry, go on. Well, I was going to say the biggest difference is, is um, well, two things have happened. One, uh, people now, the vast majority of people are looking at pictures on tablets, phones. Yeah. I'm guilty of this. I mean, you can see a couple of prints up on the back wall. Uh-huh. They're not photographs. Uh, we have very few photographs printed out um, yeah. and put on the wall. So most people are used now to looking at their images on, on devices. Uh-huh. So... The quality obviously isn't as good on that. And I think people's um, expectations are less. 
my 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 benefit is my actual photography always was uh-huh. um, because best phone in the world you're going to struggle to get a really good action picture yeah um although nowadays you know you, you've got these cameras doing 4k um, video then you can take you know you can shoot 60 frames a second at 4k and put a still out of it now that's that still takes a bit of an element. I think some of the Samsung phones are doing 8K videos now, and you can lift and you can lift stills off of that. So that's the way that's the way it's going, really. And and I've tried to embrace certainly the video side of things as well. And I've spent a lot of money over the years on video kit. I love it. It's a, it's like a breath of fresh air to me. Mm. Um, I'm totally self-taught in terms of editing and even filming, really. Um, I'm probably not the best in the world, far from it, but I, I just love it. Oh, I don't know. I, um, I mean, you've transitioned. I can remember, I think it was the, the Pet Gun Dog videos when we did them. They were amongst the first that you did. And I can remember it was a real learning curve for both of us. I was learning how to stand in front of the camera and talk, and we were doing the filming and everything together. And... We won't mention the one we had to reshoot because the sound was all rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear we just mentioned it <laughs> i wasn't gonna say anything. i was gonna keep stum about that so yeah. but now that you've mentioned it so um we did the photos and we did the for the peck on dog and then uh, in in 2011 we did um the advanced book and we did the and then very quickly after that we did the videos for the advanced book but the sound wasn't right so i had to leave it a year then to do um, the DVD. So then we did the films for the Peck and Jog and the Advanced Peck and Jog. Uh, but yeah, it, it was wind, wasn't it? Because I used to train yeah. one minute, the wind would be coming one way and the next minute it'd be coming the other. And it was trying to get that balance between always being in the right position for the, for the wind. Cause it just and as you well know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist with, with what I try and do. And um, that's the other thing is, is not... Uh, whether it's photography or, or the video work is not letting um not letting things go if they're not quite right uh, yeah. bec- because you know i learned, as you know i've got my own youtube channel and um I, I, i've learned myself that people will be very picky on stuff and if something is not said properly or said in a way that we say it i mean i know you classic your your terminology sometimes um can be difficult to understand for non-northern people <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and and you know you'll, you'll have you'll have little sayings that you think what, what, what does that mean you know what, why so there's little things like that that he's, he's just trying to bear in mind you're going for a, a far wider audience than yeah. Somebody lives in Sunderland, for example. Um, Castle, Nick. I knew Castle. Sorry, Castle. I knew, I knew it was up north. I'm a Georgie, not a Malcolm. <laughs> you know what? All there you go. There's, there's, there's my point. There's my point in case. I know. Well, the Malcolms are going to be hissing now. They're going to be throwing things at the screen. Oh, and well. and you'll going, get, no, it's just a Georgie. <laughs> you'll get the trolls, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll be getting messages. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it's. That, yeah, I like. If, I wish I was fifteen years younger because I think the technology that's coming online and and it's just going to be brilliant, absolutely brilliant. My favourite toy is my drone. I, I absolutely love my drone, and um, I don't use it enough, uh, but I do plan to this year if we're ever allowed out. In fact, it's quite handy because I could sit at home here and just fly my drone out and take pictures without leaving my house. So, but I can't. Cause Good. Agree. Legally, you can't do it. But you know, I've been I've been doing some filming up in Cumbria um, when we've gone up training the dogs uh, on the rabbits. And when you see that perspective from above, oh, just is, is that it behind you? That's Cumbria, there. Yeah, yeah. That's my that's my isolation spot. And that that was with the drone. That was done with my drone. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's twenty. It, that's twenty one. Twenty one pictures. Uh, stitched together wow it's absolutely stunning it's actually not the full panoramic um i've had to crop it to get it on the on the screen Uh um, oh yeah Uh, uh, and again you know the 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 quality that's coming off of that little camera is just amazing is it noisy no this latest one that i've got is 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 a lot quieter Um, you know for example 
this is this is how things have changed just since we've been doing stuff for the pet gun dog i can remember standing on the back of my car trying to photograph you doing the clock i know you were standing right? in the video where you were right up on the top of the land rover weren't you imagine now sticking a drone above you and you've got the dog in the middle and you walking around and seeing it from that perspective Fantastic. it puts everything into context oh man we should have done that last year <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were a little bit pushed for time last year. We only managed to get everything done that we did. I know. But, I... But, that, but then that's how things evolve. So that's how my brain ticks over all the time. I'm, I'm fairly kind of um, niche, if that's the right word, in, in yeah. what I like to film, what I like to do. Um, yeah, I've got ideas ticking away in my head all the time. And yeah. it's just a case of trying to put them into into practice i mean this drone even tracks you i don't even have to fly it I, if, I, if i'm out doing something i just draw a box around me and it just follows me through through woodland amazing bit of kit God, that's amazing. awesome that, yeah, that's the, one I bought, the one i bought the one i bought only three years ago could oh. do nothing like that at all i mean technology is just i mean i've got one of these little um it's it's called a pivo or a pivo a little pivo and it's it's a little device. I haven't got it with me. Have you seen the doctor about that or not? <laughs> Twice. <laughs> he said you can't get an appointment now. Forget so it. Yeah. <laughs> you stand your iPhone in it. You stand your yeah. phone in it. Oh yeah, yeah, and it follows you. And you draw a circle around yourself, and it follows you around like this when you're filming. So when yeah. I'm doing, uh, when I'm doing home movies, yeah, <laughs> it follows me around. <laughs> <laughs> with the dogs I, yeah, yeah. I mean again they, there's a couple of uh, systems like that I think one's called Pixel or something like that and um, oh, I've got my, my gimbal for my big camera I can do the same thing with that um, this, I've got this little Osmo pocket which is a tiny anyway but I don't go on about kit but it, it constantly it's constantly changing um, and it's, it, it's it's very exciting I mean from just cameras and, and in a way, that's what's made being a professional photographer so much more difficult because the kit is cheaper and what it's producing in terms of the technology within the camera is so much better. Wow. And, um, and so therefore, the, what used to be the realm of the professional photographer, because they were, I, I don't pay three, four, five thousand pounds for my cameras anymore. Because that is a thousand pound. Uh huh. That's producing thirty megapixel pictures. Um, does four K video. Got six thousand tracking points for focusing. Um, I don't need to. So who and, knows where we'd be in another year's time? And and a, a really um, a really keen amateur who who's pushing themselves could could probably afford that and go out and do some decent so then the professional mob is getting pushed to one side and they're still and they're still working so so still I, working. I call them i call them and i, I i've got a lot of professional photographers and certainly event photographers moan and moan and moan about them and i never used to moan about them i just used to think what am i going to do about it because you can't change it yeah i call them pro i call them pro-am photographers they're professionals in terms of their kit they're yeah. amateurs in the term in terms that they're not making their living from it yeah so you have two choices you either uh, moan and groan and get yourself all worked up about it or you think well what am i going to do about it right i'll go and do something else my something else is writing i've i've come on i'm probably doing less photography now but i'm doing more writing i was um, going to say because a lot of people will know you as um the gun dog editor for sporting gun and before how many, that, how many years ago was that? Now seven. Well, the I, I started um, going back a little bit further. Actually, um, I used to write for a magazine called Digital Photographer, which was one of the very first digital photography magazines, and that came off the back of what I've mentioned earlier on about the the EOS magazine. So every okay. month, I used to go off and do um, a monthly uh, subject. I did graveyards. I did funguses. I did trees i did I used to pick a subject and go off and photograph it and then write write about it and it was great really because it it, it made me go out and photograph other things um sadly now i only really photograph dogs um 
but that's what happens when your hobby turns into your job. Yes. And um, so then, I don't know, I can't, I was supplying a lot of pictures to the shooting magazines because we did a lot of gun dog tests and probably that's where I made my name is photographing gun dogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't even remember how it, how it happened. I think it was when uh, James Margerton or even Charlie Jacoby was editor of the sporting shooter. Uh -huh. And uh, I, can't, I can't even remember whether they asked me to write or I suggested about writing something. But I wrote for the Sporting Shooter for at least eight years. Uh -huh. We supplied a lot of pictures to, as it was then, IPC, which is Sporting Gun, Shooting Times, the Field, etc. And then, and they were very good to me, the Sporting Shooter, I have to say. And still are, they still print my pictures now, but I don't write for them. Um, and then I got the offer to go over to be, I have to say it's freelance, I'm not employed by the Sporting Gun, but uh, I, they wanted to increase their gun dog section and, and do more with that. So I went over with the, with the view really opened up a couple of the other magazines for me, like the shooting times and the field and shoot gazette. And uh, yeah, so probably again about, and it's got to be, you know, that could be another eight years now. Yeah. Cause um, I've been, I've been living in Scotland for four and a bit years now. Yeah. yeah. And I finished writing uh, for sport and gun before I came off. Yeah. So yeah, it could well be kind of eight years, and it's difficult. I I, I do now uh, between between seven and nine pages every month, um, and I do a monthly diary on um, Ted, my little four-year-old cocker. Um, so we've fo we've followed him since he was a puppy. Uh, I, I've added into that now. Well, in fact, before that, I was writing about Harry, and before that, I wrote about Sweet. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've got to keep getting new dogs because I keep needing new new things to write about. New material. <laughs> yeah. So so now we 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 do the monthly diary on Ted and um, and Percy, my my little eight month old pup, who's an interesting little chap. Um, and then the gun dog articles, gun dog training articles. Um, I take pictures for those, and sometimes I, I kind of help the the trainers write them. Other times I don't have to. And then I do what we class as a general general article, so that can be on a gun dog matter. Um, it can be on a shooting matter, it can be on something else. Um, and it's hard every single month to come up with something different and new. But I try very hard to, to come up with new things. Mm -hmm. um, and you're but, doing, um, on your YouTube channel, uh, you're doing Percy's Progress now, because it used to be, what was Ted called? Was training, it like training, with Ted. Training, training with Ted. Training with Ted. Training with Ted. Yeah. And now it's Percy's Progress. Yeah, and uh, I started the YouTube channel actually. Um, absolutely, it was two functions. One as a bit of fun, uh -huh. and two, uh, basically, I was videoing. Uh, I, lo I love my walk up shooting, that's my passion. Um, that and training dogs now. And uh, so I, I was wearing a head cam, and a little group of us would go out and we buy a little trust. 20 minute circle of trust, yep, yeah, CLT. And um, so we, funnily enough, I had somebody emailed me the other day asking for a signed photograph for his grandma because his grandma likes watching the videos. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> no, it's not awesome at all. You realise you realize how old you're getting when it's the grandma's <laughs> the signed photograph. Or anyway, so I, I did it really as a record, you know, of, um, of our shoot days. And I'm so pleased I did it because... Uh, we, we lost Sweep, um, and Sweep was a little star in her own, and she was another little cocker. She was 16 last year, and, and, and she passed away in the summer. And um, she had a huge fan base uh, around the circuit, because obviously we used to take on all the shows with us. Uh -huh. but, but I've got videos of her little shoot days, when she was out with us. Um, and I've got Harry, who's 12 now, and obviously I've got Ted. So that was the reason I did it, really. It was purely selfish reasons to give me um, a, a record of uh the dogs and, and and our shoot days mm -hmm. and it's really latched on i think i'm just short now of eight thousand subscribers and i think we're not far off of three million views now um, brilliant. and i kind of in more recent years i did the little training with ted videos uh -huh. and i decided when we got the pup i would do uh, percy's progress and look i'm uh, 
I've, I've been lucky over the years because I've met people like you and other tr gun dog trainers. Uh -huh. And I've, I've sat there and I may have just sat there photographing a training session. I may have sat there photographing a working test, but I'm like a sponge and I've learned so much. And I've taken a little bit from you and a little bit from this one, a little bit from that one. Uh -huh. And I've, I've kind of applied all those bits and pieces to my dogs and my way of doing things. Uh -huh. So I've always said I'm not a, a gun dog trainer, but I like to train my gun dogs. That's how I kind of categorize it. Um, that said, in the last year, I've been doing one-to-one -one lessons. Uh -huh. And my absolute ultimate aim there is for those people to turn around and say, sorry, Nick, we don't need to come and see you anymore because we've got the dog we want. Yeah. And, and it's, it's great when that happens, isn't it? You, um, yeah. we, I used to take them through a whole load of grading system with me, with a pet gun dog, and then they would end doing the working gun dog certificate. Yeah. And when they did the working gun dog certificate, that was almost like a graduation. We'd go out, we'd have a curry, we'd have a beer. And then it'd be come back on the training days if you want to keep training. And and then it clears the way for more new people to come in and feed yeah. more people, doesn't it? But I did a little thing last last year where um, I had four. It was a lovely day, actually. Um, I, I bought a day uh, at one of the places where we go shoot over Tewkesbury. And there was four four handlers with their dogs. We had uh, English Springer, Cocker, Clumber, and an American Cocker. Um, nice. All, 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 the, all, all had come training and all got to the point where their dogs were ready to be shot over. Uh -huh. And um, it was just a lovely, we shot seven birds. Um, they all got retrieves, all got flushes. And to me, it was just the best day ever. Um, the two of the people had never even been out in the shooting field before. Uh -huh. um, and it was just fantastic. Uh, and to to it's a bit like when I do my photography lessons as well. Sometimes you start off trying to teach somebody to take a picture of a running dog. And oh, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did and a deal with you. I remember that. But yeah, you oh, did. Where's the yeah. dog gone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but what I love, and if, if you've got a little group of people, and when they start, they they and all the clicks are at different times. Uh -huh. so click, click, oh no, that's no good. Click, 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 no, that's no good. And then eventually, as they get everybody clicks at the same time. Yeah. And you know then you've kind of done your job. Yeah. And it's a bit like with those guys there with their dogs. Um, Liz, Liz, Robert and uh, Kyle are, are a family that come. They've got a Springer Ace. And I love this dog to bits. He's one full on Springer. I mean, he works for me like he's my dog. In uh -huh. fact, quite often Liz will just, they'll come say, there you go, Nick, take him. No, you come for your, no, no, no. We just like you working. him, And I love working him. Mm -hmm. But he got a flush. He stopped at a flush. I managed to shoot the bird for him, which was fortunate. Um, and Liz handed him out to him and the bird come back. Wow. Mm. I call that the full package. That's what I aim to do with my dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and she still talks about it now. And that was last October. That's brilliant. It's so, really satisfying training people, isn't it? You, um, it can be really frustrating as well. But it can be when, when the owners get it and the dog gets it. And you just go, well, I'm just going to sit here and watch. It's lovely. Yeah. It's funny, again, I'll, I'll make a comparison between um, teaching somebody to take a photograph and somebody to, to, to handle a dog, actually, rather than train a dog, handle a dog. But I'll get people, and I've had people come with the most expensive camera gear uh -huh. and can't work it out. They just uh -huh. cannot manage it. And you can get the most talented dog and that handler just can't manage it. So quite often the two the two things actually have one thing very much in common. It's dealing with the people, training the people, not necessarily getting the camera settings right or training the dog. Yeah. It's getting the people and having that patience and um I just get a buzz out of it. I, I just I do, I just get a buzz out of it. Um and I get a buzz out of training my own dog. I mean, Ted probably is the dog of a lifetime. Um, I can do anything with him and he'll do anything for me um, but this little Percy if I can get him right he will tick all the boxes for me um, he, he, he's a different dog to, to Ted altogether um, and I've actually had to deal with him in a different way um, normally I put quite a lot of 
um, obedience in them early on. Uh-huh. Get retrieving, put a lot of obedience on it. With him, ordinarily I wouldn't have had a, a puppy over this time of the, over this, this time of the year. Uh-huh. But he came up, um, and I'm very lucky to get him, so I took the chance. Uh-huh. And uh, so, because of the winter, he, he really has he's, he's had his head a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, <laughs> last last week, a uh, week before last, week, I was up in Cumbria. He, um, we went into a woodland to do a little bit of hunting with him, and uh, we, there was a few fences about. But we we cleared them out of the way. Mm-hmm. We hadn't gone more than about twenty yards. He flushed his cockbird. He ran down the bank through a string, tried to get up the bank the other side. He was <laughs> full on, absolutely full on, and it just makes me laugh. I just stood there and laughed at him. But once I got him back and his head was back in gear, my God, did he go! So yeah, I'm hopeful for him. He sounds great. He reminds when I watch him, he reminds me a bit of Zig actually. Mm. Zig was like yeah. that. He was an absolute nutter. Yeah. And, um, one of my trainers, Darren, who had who's yeah. got Mo- Moss is still there, the lovely Moss. Yeah. Um, he says, you know, watching Ziggy was it was almost as if I had a foot on the accelerator and a foot on the brake at the same time. He was like yeah. everything to contain himself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, great and it's, dogs. And it, you know, even in this current situation, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a film this week, hopefully, but in the garden. So I've got to adjust. I've got to adjust what I do with yeah. him um i'm hoping we do have a shooting season this year um i'm, I'm not hearing some good things generally that that there's going to be a number of shoots that won't shoot this year there's a lot of um, shoots that have shut down yeah. yeah but but hopefully we will but that's my aim is perhaps you know january time next year mm-hmm. see if i can get him out for a little bit but it depends i'm in no rush um i like the dogs to to grow up and and yeah. Put them in. Put put them in when they're ready. Um, that's that's the fizzy dog. Take that little bit longer, don't they? It, well, Ted was classic, really, because um, I don't talk about my dogs all the time, but I talk about my dogs. And you talk um, about your dogs all the time. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I'm but amazed we spent this long talking about photography. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he he was just such an easy dog. He was just he he kind of was just so sensible, um, and nothing. Nothing phases that dog. I mean, I, 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 I remember a little video that, that's on my YouTube channel. Um, two years ago, so it had been two, I took him to a release pen when the pheasants were coming in. Uh-huh. And there were all these poults flying around him, coming out of the cage. Just stood there. Mm. Just stood there. And not getting worked up, not getting wound up. Just quite, quite happy. Mm. So, um, but I so say Percy... I see, I see a lot of, he's not related to Ted at all, I see a lot of um, likeness in him with that. Mm-hmm. But I just don't think I can push him so quickly. No, he'll, he'll at some point, his pressure valve will give. And he'll make, I, I'm quite sure with him, I'm not care if he'll make a noise. And yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't want that. Um, he's, he's a devil to photograph, I tell you. He is the devil's own job to photograph. How funny. He, um... Yeah, he, he swallowed a sock the other week, and we had to <laughs> I saw. Yeah, three hundred fifty, three hundred fifty pound at the vets, um, and I'd just driven five hours back down the motorway, and it was an out of hours. Anyway, it was just a nightmare. But I needed to photograph a picture of him sat with a sock in front of him today for for the magazine article I'm just writing, uh-huh. and just a yeah, nightmare, just a nightmare. We should have called him Ping because he just wants to jump with joy. But uh, yeah, it's all good fun. It's it's really good fun. It's really good fun. So, what's your next project then? When we because we, we were going to get to together in May at some point, but we don't know if that's going to happen now. I no, that's um, no. I mean, the Crutherland is closed because we were going to do okay. a promo, weren't we? For yep. stuff coming out, but yep. uh, that's all getting jigged about. I'm going to be putting something out this weekend, so there's okay. a that this will go out before um, the announcements. I can't quite put it out, but I've had to jig everything around because of. Yeah. Um, because of the situation, I mean, I've pulled all my books from Amazon. I'm not selling any books at the minute because I didn't think it was right putting, like, when well, my distributors in lockdown, I didn't think it was right putting the postal staff at, uh, at risk for the sake of a book. So all my books are out of stock at the minute. I'm not prepared to put people at risk. It's it's too important. Health is more important than a dog training book. 
Can you, um, have, you got, have you got a digital download for them or not? No, no, and that's okay, but the stuff that's happening that we've done, I mean, we've done a load of photos last year and more yeah. films last year, and that's hopefully all going to come to fruition this weekend okay. because I've kind of turned everything on its head. Uh, so Interestingly enough, I was speaking to um, the editor of the Sporting Gun last week, and um, the, the subscriptions for the magazine have gone sky high. Really? Yeah, and what they're also going to do, they're also now, um, and that's probably the reason why I ask you what I've just asked you, is because um, they're doing uh, single issue digital downloads. Right. So, because people are stuck at home, nothing to do. Um, so well, yeah. that, I mean, that's, that the plan is to get the films out. Yeah. And that will give people things to work on because there's, there's more films in there, which will be great. So, yes. but well, I'm going to put put an announcement out hopefully this weekend um depending on how this week goes then it, it might be this weekend that everything yeah i cleverly out. swap this to me interviewing you instead of you interviewing me yeah that see would what, be see yeah, what i did then. you can you can come on and interview me i've just done it no that wasn't an interview <laughs> oh, well, all right, okay. that was that was a banter that was oh, banter. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> fact asking you what you was going to do and allowing you your uh, plug for all your stuff coming out was the right thing to do oh thank you but i'm no i'm not ready to see <laughs> you can come back next week and ask me next week but, um, i mean i have i was saying to kenny we were talking about the dogs and how old the dogs mm. are getting now and like dante's uh, six next month and spud will be seven in june and it's like mm, i think it might be time for another blonde once this is all over oh no get another yeah. cocker Oh, how do I know that cocker? You know, you know how much Kenny loved that cocker spaniel. Kenny loves Spud. He yeah, there you go, see? Mad for Spud. But he put me in hospital. <laughs> well, no, no, you didn't get out of the way of him. Well, he didn't get out of the way of me. <laughs> I've got four of them and none of them have ever put me in hospital. They've nearly made me bankrupt, but no, not... not <laughs> no, yeah, I want another not... blonde. I want another blonde. I miss Angus. Yeah, BC, are you going to get another one because you want it to be like Angus? No, because they make me smile. Yeah. It just made me laugh. They're such dopey, Goods. gorgeous doofers, you know? I can't... Um, yeah, the thing is, as well, as you get older, you start... I mean, I get told off because I, I say, Percy, maybe my last pup. And um, cause I'll, it's different, you know, if my, my mates are younger than me, are all going over to Labradors. Okay. You know, they're getting older, you know, and they're younger than me. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I hit the big six zero next year. So, really? I, could, I could be seventy by the time Percy gets to ten. This is true, but I mean, seventy is not old. No, it's not. But, but you, might want, you might want to go to a bigger dog because you need. <laughs> you can't be so. <laughs> Yeah. Won't. Yeah. No, that's true. And it's truly a shame you've got to, you've got to judge your age by what dog you've got. Yeah, you, you know you, you want. I might have to look at a Great Dane. I was going to say when you get a bit older, you want a Great Dane. You know, big trouble. Trouble is, a Great potential. Dane would actually be no. It's no good a Great Dane because that would actually be taller than me. <laughs> Fortunately, nobody can see that I'm only five foot six tall. But yeah, so I do have that advantage of being small. I can manage a cocker spaniel still. Yeah, no. I love Spud. He's amazing. He's a, an awesome dog. But he was an accident. He, he wasn't. He wasn't meant to be with me. <laughs> I remember you getting him. So do I. I said, "What do you think of this new one? They're very hairy. Yeah, yeah. That line's very hairy in ears. I have to get them trimmed." Yeah. 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 No, we. Um, I can't imagine life without a cocker spaniel. I must admit. I can't. We keep talking about getting down to two because we've got Harry who's 12, Fuss that's 10, Ted that's four, and then obviously Percy who's uh, eight months. And uh, I, I kind of, because it, it, it takes, to, for me, it takes about two years before they're ready to go into the shooting. Definitely. Season. And um, so, you, you know, how Percy came along, sorry, Ted came along really when Harry was six. Uh -huh. um, and then Percy's coming along now when Ted's coming into four. Uh -huh. So then do I wait another four years and think, oh, I better get another one? I don't know. I, I think four, I think when your dog turns four, it's a good time to think about getting a puppy. 
Do you know, I think they've reached their peak, though. When I look back, certainly at Harry, his peak was six to seven. Yeah. And, and, and I say this to people, you know, if you analyse how, I mean, I did, I did close on to 67 days beating, picking up and shooting this, this season just gone. And, and so did Ted. He, he, missed, he missed two weeks. Uh-huh. He, got, he got cut on some barbed wire. But when you look at most, most dogs, gun dogs, um, you, know, you might be lucky to start in October, mm-hmm. uh, depending on where you live. You might get a bit of partridge earlier, but most people start mid-October. Most people are going to do every other Saturday. Yeah. You know, so you might be lucky and do five days, six days a season. Mm-hmm. Well, that takes a long, a long time for your dog to get that experience on that, on that basis. Obviously, people do more and some people do less. Yeah. So it, it can take to that period of time, I think, six and seven before they really come into their own. No, and, then of course, but, and then, well, yeah, and then, of course, after that, what you just said there, you hit the nail right in the head. They think they know their job better than you do, and then you end up with a total lunatic on your hands for the eight, nine, ten years old. <laughs> so you get like Harry, that's that's deaf. And um, I had a day out with him this year because I haven't really done much with him this year. And Ted had got injured, so I took him shooting down in Dorset. And you know, at twelve years old, he still did a full day. And yeah. he, I was over the moon with him, mm-hmm. over the moon with him. And it's frustrating at times you know, trying to get him to go out on a res- retrieve and I couldn't because mm-hmm. um, he couldn't hear me. Um, he made out, obviously, he couldn't hear the stop whistle when I wanted him to. But <laughs> we, I'm so glad I did it. Yeah. I'm so glad. It was forced upon me, but I'm so glad I did it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Bless them. Old dogs. They are, I mean, old dogs just make my heart sore. I haven't, I haven't had an old dog. I've not been looking no, no, to have a really old dog. You know, mm-hmm. just things, and um, you watch Spud's gonna outlive all of them, isn't he? <laughs> I say, Sweet did 16, so he didn't do bad at all, and um, yeah, broke our heart when she went. And uh, ironically, that was one difficulty we had with Percy because he looked so much like her as a puppy, uh-huh. and uh, but he's, not, <laughs> he's nothing like her in personality. <laughs> yeah. You love her white eyebrows, you know, yeah, really white eyebrows, yeah, I've met she. She had the grumpiest face as she got older. She just had such a grumpy little face. Love oh. bless. I always remember we was at a show down in um, Highclere in Newbury, and this great big bloke come up. He was massive, tattoos all over his arms, and he come up to me. To, uh, I can remember it so clearly. It was so many years ago. You Nick Ridley? So I said, yeah. He said, Duh. you got that dog with you? So I said, who? He said, sweet, sweet. You got sweet with you? So I think Crossy wants the knicker. <laughs> so I said, yeah. He says, can I see her? I said, well, what do you want to see her for? Well, I've followed her ever since she's a puppy in, in a magazine. It's the first thing I read, and I want my picture taken with her. And he was, he was like <laughs> total bruiser. <he> was. <laughs> and he just wanted to see her. Yeah. How lovely. Oh, but don't do remember. that to us, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I, I did a little, I did a little demo at uh, a shooting school uh, last year. I got asked to do it. Never done one before, but anyway, I did it. And uh, there was fifteen people on each little demo. There was uh-huh. two demos, two. And the vast majority of them were there, were there to see Ted. Then come to see the demo. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't interested in anything else other than seeing Ted. Yeah. So, bit lovely. It's, that's the way. So what I need to do then is stop talking to you and get you to go and get Ted and sit Ted there <laughs> so I'm talking to Ted instead. <laughs> right. Well, probably, all joking apart, he probably, would, he, he probably would manage that. <laughs> he probably would manage that. Yeah. Oh, how lovely. Nick, it's been so cool talking it's to you. It's good fun, isn't it? Yeah. It's been really good fun. And, You've had uh, some editing today. Sorry? You're going to have some editing to do. Well, just a little. Just a little. Yeah. How long are you going to make this? Well, we've been talking for an hour. No. Then, yeah, and then we'll have a little bit of it. We've only got that little bit, uh, and then we'll go for it. So I'm going to just say a uh, kind of goodbye to you. I'm going to stop the podcast. And uh, thank you again for being my first... My pleasure. My first guest. Thank I've been you. a lot of things in my life, but I've never been a guinea pig. So there you go. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Nick. Okay, take, take care. See you later. Bye-bye.